جعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم غلدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وإن Scripture and made me a prophet. 
and he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoyed upon me prayer and charity as long as I remain alive. And made me dutiful to my mother and that he has not made me a wretched tyrant. And peace is on me the day that I was born and the day that I would die and the day that I am raised alive. That is Jesus, the son of Mary, the word of truth about which they are in dispute. It is not befitting for God to take a son, exalted is he, when he decrees an affair, he only says to it be, and it is. Jesus said, and indeed, God is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. This is a straight path. Dear brothers and sisters, dear respected guests, elders, community members, people from all walks of life, welcome. And because we're in Abu Dhabi, welcome with an Ahlin Musa'na. May God, the Almighty, Creator of the heavens and the earth, shower His peace and blessings upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Jibril, Gabriel, the Egyptians call me Gibril, and many other uh, pronunciations, Jibrail, by our subcontinent members. I will be your host tonight. I'll touch uh, base with you a few times just to make sure that things will go smooth. This is your program, brothers and sisters, respected guests. Please feel free, feel comfortable. If there's anything we can help you with, we can make your stay more enjoying. Let any of the members that you see wearing one of these handmade badges. And uh, we'll try to make our best to make you feel comfortable. This is our humble center here, and you're welcome. Today's topic is a very, very deep one. But at the same time, I'm very sure that it will be a very entertaining one. The speaker, Yusuf Estes, will be presenting to you what is Islam. You're all living in a Muslim country, interacting and working with Muslims, dealing with them on a regular basis, seeing things on TV, seeing things on the street, you might have questions, you might need clarifications, you might be enlightened by today's speech. What is Islam? Sheikh Yusuf Estes, brothers and sisters, dear respected guests, is loved by young and old alike. Children and adults of all faiths delight to hear him entertain while presenting the pure message of Islam. And I might add to that in a very simple way. They call him the funny sheikh. For those who know sheikh, really an old person, but more a wise person. And Sheikh Yusuf Estes, that's what he is. May Allah bless him. He was raised in a strong Christian home, educated in Texas, and became successful. And he owned music stores. He was on TV shows and used his talents for piano and the organ as a music minister while preaching the Bible. He served as a delegate to the United Nations Peace Summit for Religious Leaders and U.S. Federal Chaplain from 1994 until 2000. His story, priests and preachers enter Islam, is truly amazing. You can Google that if you want or YouTube it. You laugh and cry at the same time. Sheikh Yusuf Estes has many websites in simple English helping people to understand Islam helping people to learn about Islam. Websites such as www.yusufestes.com that is www.yusufestes.com for those who would like to check it out. His lectures in universities, institutions, military and public venues are for all faiths, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, and Jewish alike. Many preachers, priests, and rabbis have complimented his ways of presenting a fresh and enlightening picture of the world's fastest growing religion, that is Islam. Sheikh Yusuf Estes uses the latest website technologies, internet, high-tech, DVDs, CDs, 
and many others to encourage everyone to share the message of Islam, the message of peace, surrender, and obedience to the creator of the world's God. Sheikh Yusuf Esses also helps many new people to Islam using straight talk and humor while answering many of the harsh questions and attacks against Islam and the Muslims. He makes it fun and easy for all to understand. Dear brothers and sisters, respected guests, I don't want to keep you too long from him. I would like to welcome Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Sisters, just one announcement. Please turn off the meeting spoiler, and that is the cell phone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
we had people entering Islam before we ever got there. It was amazing. It was really amazing. Because we had some brothers with us that really, they understood of, of the very beautiful basics, and they were explaining it very nicely in English. I learned a lot on that trip, mashallah. I hope I learned something every day. Okay, we got everybody squared away. We got those folks are in here where they can hear. started, what I want to do is let you know one of the reasons that we are on this tour, myself and a couple of the brothers who are working with us on this project, it's called Guide Us. The Guide Us project started, I guess, 20 years ago when I put my head on the ground and said, God, guide me. It kind of started right there. And since that time and until now, I keep asking Allah every day, guide me, guide me, guide me. And you know, we say in Arabic, Dina, guide us, guide us, guide us. So we ask Allah to guide everybody every day. That's a big part of our project. But in particular, we discovered that the message of Islam has been so corrupted and maligned and abused throughout the world, and in particular in the West, from Muslims and non-Muslims alike, saying and showing things that are just not Islam. We instituted some websites about 13 years ago. We started with something called Islam Today, and Islam Tomorrow, and Islam Yesterday, and Islam Always, it look, looks like I wanted to get Islam forever and ever, amen, you know. <laughs> now today we have more than 2,200 websites on the internet. And it's not just the number, but it's the position. Because everything on the internet is whether or not you have hits or visitors that come to your website. It's not worth anything if the people don't go to it. So by working with search engines since the early days, long before there was anything called Alta Vista, before there was anything called Yahoo. And we were out there with our own spiders crawling the internet trying to pull this information back. So it made it easier for me, maybe, to be able to ensure that each of our websites, when you type in keywords, comes up. If you go to shakegoogle.com, you can and with that, everybody wants to get their fatwa from Google now. So we go to shit Google. But seriously, when you go to the search engines, if you type in news space Islam, there are, I think we saw 70 or 80 million pages last night when we looked at it. 70 or 80 million. Where's Osama? Here, here. How many were there? Yeah. Around 72 million. 72 million yes. pages, pages right? Yes. Re -re -related and what was our position? Alhamdulillah, we were in the, the top three and <coughs> on the first page, basically. We, were, we had the first position. And third. And, and third, yes. First and third position. Correct. How's that? And by the way, we did it without Google Ads. <laughs> We shared a lot of long stories last night, and I was showing you a lot of the things that we have achieved with that. I want to recruit this guy and as many as of our other brothers as I can while I'm here to help us on this project because we have brothers all around the world helping us. And if you work really hard, you may be able to catch up with all the sisters that are working with us around the world. And you think I'm joking? You should see the work that they do. So. This project is not my project, it's a lost project, and a lot of us are joining our hands together to make it work. And this is what makes it so beautiful. We today have more than 2,183 websites, all for Islam. All of them free stuff. Even our Arabic and English course, they can pay money, but if they said, well, I don't have any money, we can still send it to them for free. 
we suggest like $19 for all the discs and the course and then an online follow-up and take them all the way through the Quran. But if they say, well, I don't have it, they don't have it. But by the way, we never stop anybody if they want to donate. We don't tell them you can't, you know. We'd like you to join us any way you can. And then finally, I want to come to the point, the main point that we came out for this part of the guys' project. Allah blessed us. We've been making du'a, and sometimes you have to make du'a for a long time, especially if it's something really, really valuable. You have to keep asking Allah, asking Him, and asking Him. Of course, He doesn't give you something really valuable to store it away, right? You have to work. So after a number of years, Allah granted us to have the first full-time, 24-hour television channel in the United States and Canada for Islam, the first day of this year, for Alhamdulillah. And what did we call it? Guide Us TV? So, or Guide U.S. <laughs> guide U.S. TV. Guide Us TV. You can find it on the internet anywhere in the world, but if you have the satellites and you want to watch it on satellite, that's very simple to do because we're on Galaxy 19, Galaxy 25, and World TV 99. And soon, inshallah, to be on more, and then up to Allah. It's His channel, but if He wants us to have it, it'll be on the Red, red Bird? No, Hot Bird. I knew it was one of those birds. Blue Bird, Red Bird, Hot Bird. There you go. It's in your, and I, we want to get this message in the English language very clear. <coughs> Those of you who know uh, one of your own local residents here in Abu Dhabi has been working with us for a number of years. He's been one of our strongest supporters with his time, his prayers, his efforts. And maybe some of you know him. His name is Sheikh Sam Al Amri. How many of you know him, Sheikh? He's a sweetheart. And he has been handling. One of the hardest things is to be regular and do it every day, every day, every day. And he's been doing that teaching in our chat room on chatislam.com and answering questions for people around the world. Many, many people came to Islam after they understood this message from him. So make God for him. We tried to reach him all day today. I don't know what happened. We just couldn't, I didn't get to hook up with him. So if any of you know where he is or how to reach him, well, let us know before we leave because we'd like to see him on this trip. Anyway, so that's why we're out. We're raising awareness about the channel and raising the opportunity for all of us to join our hands together for this project to keep it going and make it grow and do even more. The programs that we run are in cooperation with Peace TV and Buddha TV. So Allah let me be the one to join these guys all together with us so that we have now a cooperative of media partners. So this makes it easier for all of us to have the latest technology, the best equipment, and inshallah, the best hookup around the world. Some of you have heard, how many of you know Dr. Zachary Okay, let's go another way. Who doesn't know Dr. Zachary Knight? <laughs> Three people, okay, four. Dr. Zachary Knight, of course, is in India and he's been doing give up his medical practice to work full time and do the same thing that we're trying to do as well. So now let's come to the point, those of you who are not Muslim, are you probably bored to death with this long commercial, so I want to come to our point. What we wanted to talk about today is what is true Islam and who are the real Muslims. So this, some of it you will know, because you're in a Muslim country and you've probably heard some of these things. But some of it may shock even the Muslims to wake up to some of the things that come, huh, they know that. And then we're going to endeavor to speak as much English as we can, but we'll need to refer to the Arabic language because there are some words in Arabic that do not translate to English. There are also phrases, idioms, parables in the Quran that will not make good sense to you if you don't understand the Arabic at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu the classical Arabic language. So we'll do our best in Shabbat Bismillah. I recall that when I first met a Muslim, I was very apprehensive 
about what we're getting into with this guy. Simply because I had heard a lot of negative things about Muslims. They're terrorists, hijackers, kidnappers, all around bad guys. They don't even believe in God. They just worship some black box out in the desert, kiss the ground five times a day, you know. And that was all the good news I know about. Them. That was 20 years ago, though, when the media really was showing Islam in a bad way, not like today when they're so nice to us, right? <laughs> yeah, you see the sarcasm in that one. Huh? But whose responsibility, by the way, is it to tell the story of Islam? Abu Jahan? I don't think so. It was not for the enemies to tell this message, I don't think. In fact, it was the job of the Muslims to get the message out. And because we haven't done it, that's why some very nice, kind, intellectual, intelligent people are saying all the wrong things. And also because a lot of us haven't taken care of our own children or haven't paid close enough attention to our own parents, we haven't captured the spirit of Islam itself. Islam teaches us some very beautiful things. But where are they? Where are we seeing them in us? I want to start with what Allah said in the Quran, and then a couple of things that the Prophet has not told us, and then we'll go forward with what is real Islam. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَوْضِ بِلَاهِ مِنْ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ بِنَا إِنْ بِلَاهِ إِسْلَامِ وَقَالَ اللَّهُ In the same surah وَمَنْ يَبْتَنِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَاللَّهُ يُبْلَا مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْأَخِرِ دِينَ وَخَاسُ مِنْهُ وَفِي سُرَةِ مَعِيدَ حَيَاتِ اللَّهِ Now the problem that we run into it with this 
translation of saying that this means religion is because it doesn't actually fit when you put it in balance with all the other things Islam is teaching us. For instance, and I'll jump now to another surah of the Quran, almost at the very end of the Quran. Lekum dinakum waliyadin. What does that mean? To you, your religion, and to my religion. If you translate it that way. Okay, so what if somebody is an atheist? Is anybody here as an atheist that don't believe anything at all? Well, usually I have one or two. No. But if somebody's an atheist, they don't have any religion, you're supposed to say that to them. To you, your religion, and to me, my religion. They'll look at you like, you're stupid, I don't have a religion. <laughs> but everybody has a dean, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, everybody has a dean, but not everybody has a religion. So how do you translate it? There's nothing wrong with the Quran, nothing wrong with the Arabic, nothing wrong with what Allah said. The problem is with English, you don't have a word for it. We really don't. So we have to use a phrase. The total weight of your life. What are you doing with your life? That is your deen. If you understand that, now you understand the word deen. So go back and look at it again. The only way Allah is going to accept from you is Islam. We're going to come to that word in a minute. If anybody wants a way of life other than Islam, Allah will never accept it from them. Here after they were the losers. On this day have I perfected your way of life for you, showing you, in other words, how to live your life the best way you can live it, and conferred my biggest favor on you and chose for you to submit to me in all Islam. And again, we'll come back to that. Then, when you come back to the end of it, as said, the people before us, Jews and Christians, were never ordered any more than this, to worship God alone, no gods beside God. Everybody knows the Ten Commandments starts with that. And it goes forward and it says, establishing worship, Salah, Pesaka, and this is the way most clear. And then finally, to you, your way, and to me, my way. You want to make it mine? Have a nice day. Of the Quran, I'm just telling you that the idea is the word way. The reason I want to focus on that, how many of you have a Bible? Anybody has a Bible at home? If you have a Bible at home, Muslim, Christian, doesn't matter, or just somebody collects books. <laughs> if you have a Bible at home, okay, you can find in the Acts of the Apostles, this comes right after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the Acts of the Apostles, and you find that. Saul, who later became Paul, said these words himself. He said, I used to persecute even unto death. Meaning he went out and killed the people of the way. He was talking about the people who followed the Dean of Isa, the way of Jesus. That's what he's talking about, the people of the way. And the proof is, it will be capitalized in your Bible. The word way is capitalized, because it was a proper noun. In the Bible it says, Paul again telling us, that they were never even called Christians until they went to Antioch. The pagans of Antioch were calling them Christians like some people would call us Mohammedans. Prior to that, everybody knew them as people of the way. Over the centuries, they accepted this name. This, by the way, if you didn't know this, Muslims don't like to be called Mohammedans. We don't worship Muhammad. We follow him. We try to follow him. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but we don't worship him. Whoever worships Muhammad has missed the point and is no better off than a pagan. Because pagans make shirk sure right or wrong. So who's worshiping Muhammad? Instead of a law, they missed the point. The whole point. And we find some Muslims do that. You will see people do that. And he asked us not to do that. So this helps us understand the word being is way. The next one. I told you we'll take that word Islam. Let's find out what does Islam mean. Can you tell me? What's your name? It's 
Zero. Zero. C Y O R. I have. I have. Okay, so what is this sign? What do you think it means? Belief in God. Believe in God. Who else will tell you? A way of life. Okay. Who else will tell you? Anybody else? From our guests. From our guests. Peace. Means peace. Who from from no, from, from our non-Muslim, yes. You look like a Muslim, man. I'm sorry. You can't hide it. No, actually, you look like Egyptian. Get that rebel look in your eyes. Get the sound. This is the Egyptian smile. Okay. Uh, somebody tell us, uh, ladies, maybe some of the ladies tell us, what is Islam? What does it mean? Just, just say it. I can hear you. Submission to God. Somebody else. Okay. What we'll do now, we'll take the Arabic letters and find out because Arabic is, is like it's a Semitic language like Hebrew you can find the roots and it will tell you what it is and you can find a lot of stuff all the way back we don't we don't really need to do this but there you go perfect there we go yeah one of the things that I like to do with the language is called etymology did you know I was etymologist and there's no such thing I'm kidding. <laughs> it's to take the words and break them up and find out where they come from and understand it from there. This word, Islam, is coming from a verb, aslama. Aslama comes from a root, sinam means. Sin. Sin. Can you say sin? Yes. This is just three letters. And from it come all of these other words. When you reach this particular word, Aslama, the verb, then Islam is the noun. Aslama has five English words all at the same time. If you take one out, it's not the same word anymore. There's actually more than this because security is in there as well. But the principal five are these. Surrender. Now we Muslims are getting pretty good at that. You know, Iraq, Afghanistan, <laughs> airport security. <laughs> It's not exactly what it meant, though. Surrender, submission to the commandments of Allah, obedience, sincerity. I'm going to give you number five in a second. Sincerity. Can you force people to be sincere? No. You force them to do a lot of stuff, but if you force them, it wasn't sincere. Immediately, true? So therefore, it would be impossible to spread any religion by force if it required sincerity. You would just be forcing them to give in to this whatever, and that'd be the end of that. But it wouldn't be the religion, it would be your version, because they sure didn't have the sincerity. AK-47s are swords either way. Now, a side note. Some people said Islam is spread by the sword. How many of you ever heard that? If you ever heard that expression, raise your hand. Islam is spread by the sword. Okay, now you heard it tonight anyway. Huh? <laughs> if that's true, I would encourage you to go to your encyclopedia and look up the word crusades and see who were attacked by whom and who had the swords and where the blood went. When the Catholic Church sent everybody into Jerusalem to level the place. There was a movie that came out about that. Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah. Another word, if you look up in your encyclopedia, is the word 
inquisition. It starts with an I. Inquisition. It means to question somebody, and in particular about their faith. So, with a sword in the neck, what do you say about God? Uh, well, uh, you're hesitating. Uh, well, uh, what do you like to say? <laughs> because if you said he was one, then you lost. They would pull you apart, rip your skin off. Some of the people that cut them in half, the things they did to the women, I can't tell you. I can't say it. It was that horrible. Horrible. Spain, exactly where it was. The Muslims were ruling Jerusalem during the Crusades and the bloodbath that came. And the Muslims were ruling Spain when the Inquisition came. Same thing. So, which religion got spread with the sword? You can probably figure it out. But in case you can't figure it out, you can also use what's called the concordance of the Bible. The concordance of the Bible is approximately mm, this big. By this big. By that big. It's huge. Bigger than a phone book. And look through it, you'll find every single word in the King James Version of the Bible. Every single word. Now, the original was even bigger than that because it included all of the words A. You know, it's A cat or A tree. It had every listing of A's. It had every listing of B and every listing of A N, on. It had, you know, which becomes so redundant, it's just like writing the Bible again and again and again and again and again. But he did it. Strong did that. Strong's concordance of the Bible. So the one I have is only as big as a phone book, and it's not as big as a telephone booth, just the book. You open it up and look up this word, sword, S-W-O-R-D, you find it more than 200 times, and most of it, or a lot of it, you're going to find it where? New Testament. <clears throat> now, one of the phrases from my book, my Bible, it says in it, that Jesus said, do not think I came with peace. I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. I went to my preacher and I said, well, the Muslim showed it to me. I said, but I never read it before. I'm looking at him going, what was that? He said, no, 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 you misunderstood. You have to read it in the spirit. The spirit of what? What are you talking about? It says sword. He said he didn't come with peace. He said, no, he came with something better than peace. I said, a sword. No, 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 no. He said, you first of all, understand this. I love the way that some of these homemade preachers can come up with a religion just like this. Watch what he do. He said, you have to understand, you see, the Bible was really being preserved in Latin. And that, of course, was Italy and Rome at that time. And we know that these scholars and scrollers, you know, they used to stay up late at night and be trying to copy one after the other after the other, and they only had a candle to work with, and they could hardly see. And when they get hungry, they're going to eat. What do they eat in Italy? I go pizza. I said no, 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 spaghetti. And a piece of spaghetti fell down there, and it looked like an S, and he thought it was an S. It wasn't sword. It was bird. I said, but you said that it was copying scrolls. Yeah. Okay, when did this happen? Well, you know, back in those days. I said, what days? What days? He's, he's mentioned like two or three hundred years after Jesus. I said, really? And an S, and an S showed up. Do you know there was no S? Because there was no English until 900 and something years ago. When the Saxons, the Normans invaded the Saxons, that's when they come up with the English language, 1066 A.D. Then you always say, no, 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 no. You just have to read in the spirit. Just have to. That's it. Okay. So now take the Quran. This is a translations. Now translations could have anything. We're not responsible for what people think in their translation. But what we are responsible to tell you is that there are many words for a handheld weapon made out of metal. One is very common around here, you guys have probably seen it. They wear it as a part of the uniform, you've seen that? Kanja, 
the Hanja, okay? The little dagger looking thing with the bent point. I think it's a letter rope, no, I'm not sure. Anyway, they have that. Then there's another one called Hussam, safe, Muhammad. Many words for sword, and you don't even need the spaghetti to get it. Not one time, no occurrence anywhere in the Quran of any of these weapons mentioned for either side, for or against Islam. So that gives us a lot to think about. And while we're thinking, we'll be right back after this. Don't go away, you're watching Guy's TV. <laughs> Okay, can I once again ask everybody, please turn off the phones and the toys that make the noise. Please, 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 please. Thank you. 